and never been like that. Western sky will always hold the sun when the day is through. It's a totally different view now that good for good. Taking it all to Tennessee. Taking it all to Tennessee. Taking it all to Tennessee. Oh, what about me? Minstrel spirit at its high. Things I love about you mostly to roll these wheels. Unless you're singing, coming home, then I don't want to hear another. We've been using interpreters at Falcon Ridge since 1990, and the reason we did that was we were going to have a larger camping festival with multiple stages, and you know, we had been a fan many years learning how to do th various things at the Clearwater and the Old Songs Festival that have access and have interpreters. And we wanted to add that too. Well, I come for both the interpreter and for the performers. I do depend on the interpreters, absolutely, for communication access. I want to know what the performers are singing about. I want to know the spirit of their songs. So I watch the interpreters for access reasons. However, if a performer is really animated, I really enjoy watching the performer. For example, the Neilds. My sister's deaf too. Yeah. So um, she comes with us. Yeah, and it's really she great. Came the first year. Yeah, the first year she came, and we came, and then since then, I don't know. I come and I watch the interpreter. Working with a sign language interpreter is is about sharing the stage, as far as I'm concerned. The words may work great as a poem, but it's not music until it comes off the paper. And that's what the interpreter does. They, they turn it into visual music. And I think it's its own art form, and it's valid as an art form. It's such a uh, natural coalition, sign language and spoken word performance, because the images of sign language are absolutely right on with what we're trying to do in terms of getting the audience to get their internal imagination going and the gestures only increase that. Stand up and help us sing this last part. Just sing the word stay. Just 
You know, the nature of music is that it's a communal experience. Um, at an Indian music concert, the crowd comes early and they participate in the, in the tuning while the musicians are tuning up, while everyone meditates and gets involved in the music. They're band members. And in the same way, when a, uh, an interpreter gets up, if he or she facilitates the audience meditating on our music, and the meditation might be dancing around or singing along, that's a great thing. We're glad to have that extra band member. We don't consider anything in music competi competitive. It's not a sport. It's not American Idol. I love you too, baby. Boo hoo yourself. I mean, you love you, Jody. Jody wouldn't be up here if it wasn't for me. It's impossible to use ASL and sign word for word. It is impossible. English gives a lot of information and then they get to the point at the end. And the songs will have a lot of words and they'll have the point at the end. The people who are deaf in the audience want to know what the point is. Because in deaf discourse, it's very different than English. Deaf people communicate the point first and then use the information to support the point, so the structure is often opposite. You know, you're on stage with people who've worked years and years to become recognized professionals and giants in their own right, and you've got the onus of not, of not being a distraction or, or a, a negative part of, of what they're attempting to do. Some of the challenges are, I think, really it's, it's finding a balance of being a performing interpreter because you do need some presentation on stage. At the same time, you don't want to do anything that's going to detract from the performer because that's really where the fo focus is. And you try to throw it back whenever you can. I mean, I'll look at the performer, just reminding the deaf folks and everybody <laughs> that's whose who's work that we're working musical with. Musical bridges and right. that always. But you are you're not just interpreting from English into ASL, but you are trying to do that in a, sometimes using metaphors, sometimes doing hand shapes that are consistent, something that's poetic. So first you're figuring out what the song means, then you're figuring out what the ASL would be, but then you're figuring out, okay, so taking that, now how do I create and sculpt something and develop something that is visually pleasing, at the same time not losing the message. Conceptually accurate. Conceptually accurate, and you're doing that on the fly. Shabbat shalom! Cleanliness is godliness, me Uncle Patch would sing. He broke his neck a slipping on a bar of Irish spring. Oh, Grady, he was 80, though his pride was just a pup. He died upon the honeymoon when she got his eye at a shop. Connor lived in Ulster Town, he used to smuggle arms. Until the British killed him and cut off his lucky charms. Dear old father Flanagan, who left the Lord's employ. Since this is a family show, I won't do this punchline. Hey! Now everybody's dying. Uh -uh. Sorry, until our tears are dry. No way. We'll drink and drink and drink and drink, and then we'll drink some more. And more. We'll dance and sing and fight until the early morning light. Then we'll throw up, pass out, wake up, and then go drinking once again. Someday soon I'll leave this world of pain and toil and sin. Sweet. The Lord will take me by the hand to join all of me kin. Hey. The Lord. <laughs> <laughs> me only wish is when the Savior comes for me and you. 
He kills the cast of Riverdance and Michael Flatley too. Now everybody side, so till the tears are dried, we'll drink and drink and drink and drink and then we'll drink some more. We'll dance and sing and fight until the early morning light, then we'll throw up, pass out, wake up, and then go drinking once again. Then we'll throw up, pass out, wake up, and then go drinking once again. Then we'll throw up, pass out, wake up, and then go drinking once again. Da 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 and he was sort of testing the interpreter. He wanted to see how she would sign poop. And so he kept saying it over and over, so she would have to sign it over and over. And he went on for like five minutes yeah, and wouldn't um, stop. Performers love to see how to sign dirty mm. words. Mike wrote a song that uh, one of the lyrics was sits to pee. And he just couldn't wait to see how that was signed. We, we don't necessarily know the song until we hear it. And we don't really know where it's coming from and where it's going. So as we hear it, we take it in, in that language. And then you sort of try to make this picture in your head of what that is so that you can take from that picture the concept and apply that to the new language and put it out. And that little period of time is that Vance Gilbert was talking about it today. He says, I love this because this is one place where I make a joke and everybody laughs and then a few seconds later the deaf people laugh because they just got the joke because the interpreter is catching up. I'm, I have to wait to hear what's being spoken first and process it and then put it out there. So m most interpreters when we start out, myself very, very, very much included, be doing more what they call um, simultaneous interpreting. And you're right on the person talking. So while they're talking, you're signing everything that they say, but it can be really kind of difficult. Well, you know, especially if the per you know, okay, for example, if the person keeps changing the way that they're talking, it's hard to do. You take a while to process what they're saying, and especially if it's going to be really lyrical, and they're they're playing with the language. I'm thinking about you know songwriters that don't necessarily write in stories, but write more kind of poetic and beatnik style. Yeah. And it's choppy, and the one phrase relates to the phrase that's just going to be said behind it. Right. So you have to wait, and you have to wait, and I'm standing there and standing there, and everybody's looking at me. So Langton can be your friend. Tell me why. our history will the follow us forever what's the answer to the mystery or do we have to start all over are these bruises so genetic that we can't discard the weapons our parents and their parents used before evolution hold me hostage save my children from my tongue keep my wicked angry language from my double helix from my young Nobody's gonna win this time, no, they're not. I'll get the last word at this time. It never ends up again, it just goes. Oh, yeah, tell me why are we so cruel? Why are we so cruel? Why, why, why? Shit, the people, you gotta know something while you're up there. Why are people?
sound of words is what a lot of us respond to, not just the meaning behind it, but the an, an alliteration. So what's an equivalent alliteration in ASL? It may be continuity of hand shapes. Um, there's some that worked out the other day that just worked out about nighttime and blanket and morning or something, and it was just wonderful that it kind of created itself. Deaf theater troops do it with different people signing it the different, at different what we tried to do with um, Kate's Carol last year. Mm -hmm. Drum your hands for every bird. Drum your heart for all your worth. And drum for Earth, your truest mother. And drum each sunset for each other. As we revolve, we will evolve to a I never stay in a small depth book. I like to mix with everyone. Communication is not really an issue here. We gesture, we write. Hearing people are more than willing to learn new sign vocabulary. Yesterday, a six-year-old girl came up to me and signed, my name is Katie. That was so sweet. I like her that I, I feel more free when I'm over at the family stage because I feel like I can play because it's more of a childlike environment. Isn't that cool? The sky was so low that all you had to do to get a piece of it was to raise up your arms. And in fact, that's how people harvested their food. They would raise up their arms. There you go, great. And then they would pull down a chunk of sky. And then they would eat it. And when they were done, yum, yum, ah. Well, they felt really good because they had just eaten their favorite food. And the sky was very happy, as long as the people didn't take too much, you know. The sky was very happy to let them raise up their arms, pull down a piece of sky, eat it. And when they were done, yum, 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 ah, they felt really good, and the sky was very happy. But sometimes people would take a little more sky than they really needed. I think it was John Gorka actually talking about the fact that, um, that words were never enough for him and, 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 and that somehow he could say what he wanted to say with, with the lyrics, um, but there's some emotions that, that words are never going to quite capture and, and, and that's where the music comes in for him, writing a song and uh, it's a very similar thing I think, you know, it just, you, you're not, a songwriter is not just about what they're saying verbatim. So just, yeah, just reading the lyrics isn't going to do it. No. 